Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here at the residence of Brad, who lives here in the Hollywood Hills, California, which is in Los Angeles County. And we're at a, what I call a Moroccan Garden of Eden. We're going to see over 100 different fruit trees and get a lot of educational tips on how to successfully grow them. Let's check these out. Washington. Okay, so here's our here's our line of citrus. We have a Eureka lemon, we have a uh, bear's lime, um, we have a blood orange, a moral blood orange. Um, this is a dwarf, uh, this is a semi-dwarf, uh, it's a Washington navel. Valencia, another Washington navel over there, and another Valencia, and then finally um, a Satsuma tangerine. Um, and I, as I mentioned over there, we have the, uh, we have kumquats, we have the Nagami kumquats. Um, this, the, if you'll if you'll notice, I've um, I've put a mulch down here that I created myself. I've got the triangulated watering where I have three different uh, three different bubblers so that it gets watered evenly all the way around. Um, the mulch is one that I created over a, a period of probably about a year and a half. You know, ground up uh, you know some of the kitchen scraps, uh, ground up uh, trees from air, from around here when when we were landscaping and cutting it down. And so it should be pretty good for the. It's pretty good for these trees. Keeps the weeds down and and, uh, and also gives them nutrients. I've got uh, I've got four different types of avocados. Um, I've got Pinkerton. I've got Haas. I've got Zutano and Fuerte. And you like the Pinkerton? Well, I like the idea of it, but it hasn't performed for me yet. It's it, for some reason it just doesn't push beyond a certain point. So. I don't know whether I'm not growing it correctly or what's happening, but these, all these avocados were loaded ground squirrels. Those pesky ground squirrels. There's actually a den in the side of the in, in this in the uh, in the side of the hill here. Um, we should start growing hops. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, I or or put the coyotes down here. Um, <laughs> We, I've got a Kadota fig right there. You can see it's got some nice, uh, nice, uh, nice, uh, nice figs on it. I've got uh, wonderful pomegranates um, growing there, and they've got a nice crop going. Um, pomegranates are great. That's another superfood. Which one? Uh, wonderful. The, the old-fashioned one. Everybody, everybody knows. Not one of the new cult bars. Um, and you I'll, like that? You like that idea better? To, to go the old style, the wonderful. Uh, it's just doing? again, it's just it was the cost factor. The cost was this. It was zero. So I took them. I got them as five gallon plants and they and they grew into that size. But I would like someday to play, uh, try and play with those cultivars. Like I said, I've got all that land over there to expand on. Um, the, uh, the figs, I've got black mission. I've got uh, brown turkey. Um, I've got a burgundy plum. And then I have a uh, manila um, mango planted on the, on the side of the hill there. While the people are still looking at the citrus, and I want to make sure the camera catches this and we'll zoom in on the trees, but I've noticed like different trees are different colors, sheen, whatever else. Can you explain with the ones that are around you as well as the camera, sure. um, how you've treated the various citrus around here? I'm, I'm running a test this year. Uh, a long, basically, uh, all, all summer long, I want to see how these different treatments uh, respond to what I'm, I'm using. So I'm using um, Ivy Organic, the two different colors, the white and the green. I'm using neem oil on, uh, exclusively on some trees, and then I'm also using uh, uh, spinosad, which I, which I have over there. Spinosad is, uh, neem oil is basically, it's a topical uh, application, and it doesn't really go into the cuticle of the leaf. The spinosad actually goes underneath, uh, goes into the cuticle of the leaf, so if something chews on the leaf, like the leaf miner, it gets poisoned. So, it's, so it, stays, it stays, it actually stays with the plant longer you, you don't have to apply it as much as you do the neem oil. Neem oil is just, it, 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 it goes on, it affects the eggs or, the, or the, the insects, immediately stops up their pores, poisons them, kills them on contact. And then you reapply it about every seven to 14 days. Um, with the spinosad, it's, you don't have to apply it nearly as much, but it stays under the leaf and poisons anything that comes, it poisons the leaf miner when it comes up to chew on it. So, Spinosad is actually, it's, it's more of an organic compound. It was found in, in, um, in old rum barrels, accidentally, when, in, in a distillery years ago. And it's a, it's a substance that was created that way. 
and um, and so it's it's a, a basically when you a, you know they didn't it was accidentally discovered, and it, and it's very effective against um, against a number of different garden uh, pests like I mentioned before. Is this what called spin spinosad? Spinosad is a bacteria. Captain Jack's is one of the most common brands you'll find on the shelf. Um, but spinosad is a, it's just a bacteria based way of again pest control where you spray it on the plant any of the insects that consume the plant will get the bacteria in their belly and makes them sick and they'll die from there. So it's a bacterial way of controlling. So they've just continued this culture? That yeah, had off, had the, off the barrels. So, so spinosad is bacteria based and then neem oil is one of the horticultural oils to control pests as well. And, and uh, neem oil is entirely, uh, basically, it's derived from the seed of the neem tree. So is this called spinosad? Spinosad I mean, is the bacteria. Captain Jack's is the product. Other... There might be other name brands, but Captain Jack's is the one I see on the shelf. Captain Jack. Yeah. Is the castor oil derived from the castor bean plant? Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen any animals eating castor bean. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that's you'll, you'll see with the, with the um, IV organics, there's different colors, like uh, over here, um, you know, you'll see with the neem oil, which these were these were sprayed with neem oil. It's a shinier leaf. Um, but then when you get over to uh, over to that uh, tangerine over there, you'll see a little bit of more of a kind of a oh, I'd say it's it's sort of a little bit of a milky substance, but it's a little bit off color. That's that is the IV organic that's that's sprayed on there. So it's and each of them have their own benefits, as we talked about before. IV or organic is is less is is not toxic. I have a question on those trees that are very close to your wall. We're going to walk over there and talk and talk about that garden in just a second here. Okay. Okay. So we can, um, if you guys can, we can walk carefully through here. So this is um, this particular tangerine tree was was um, actually sprayed with IV organic. So you see that a little bit of the residual. It's with a green color. So you see the re residual on here. Um, but uh, otherwise, from far away, the tree is, looks just like the others. Um, but that's how you can tell. There's the green and, and the white as well. Um, we'll take a look at this uh, at this garden over here. This is the herb garden. Um, you can see we put some wildflowers in here. We put some medicinal herbs. Um, I've got uh, I've got Fuji red Fuji apples on either side, um, and uh, you can see we've got a nice crop of apples this year. Uh, the tree was the this tree was uh, sprayed with uh, IV organic in, in the green. The tree on the other side was with the white. And so I'll bring the camera in a little closer later, but you'll see the green ivory organics all over this. This one's green and this one's green as well. And then the white on the outside, I believe, right? They use as a foliar spray. Correct. And Correct. then you'll notice it on the tree trunk as well. We brushed on ivory again, it's colored brown, to basically prevent sunburn, summer sunburn, winter sun scald against the tree trunk as well. Yeah. So again, it's, it's more of a... The ants will walk over. One of the issues, one of the issues, in regards to ants, one of the issues I've seen on my property with figs, like for example, when you prune a fig, the center is so soft, the pith, that it collapses. The ants will sometimes tunnel in and colonize within the fig. I don't know if you've ever seen that, or if there's any damage to a tree trunk, but sometimes, you know, with the beetles, born colonized within. The goal is, what the ivory organics is doing is it's creating a porous, unlike the latex paint that seals and traps moisture causing rot, but it creates a porous barrier to keep the ants, keep the termites, keep the beetles out, while the tree eventually naturally heals over those, those areas. So that's what it's doing for the exposed areas. Fred, what variety did you say this was? Red, red Fuji. Red? And, and it's kind of, they say that this is a low chill, this is actually a low chill area. I think we might get 200 hours or less, but but, but this is a, a 400 or 600 hour tree, but it's still bearing okay. Um, so surprisingly enough, and then behind Charles, I've got um, I've got some really cool uh, palm, or, or persimmons. It actually just started bearing this year. I've For got, you or which which ones? This is this is chocolate. Chocolate's on the right, and then coffee cake, the one that's covered with fruit, is on the left. And, and those are gourmet, those are gourmet persimmons, and they've done actually quite well. I'm, I'm very, very happy. It's, it's, uh, it's, this will be the second year and they're performing well. Uh, my question is, my question is, since it's 
so close you, to the I wall, would it not have a problem? It's, you know, the thing is, is that um, one, one reason why I started working with Charles with the IV Organic is that ever since I started spraying the leaves, it acts like an anti-transparent and it also reduces the sun, uh, the, the sun stress in the leaves. So this last year when I sprayed them, I didn't have any problems with them whatsoever. And then I paint the trunk with, that, with the brown um, IV Organic paint and they've done fantastic. But yes, they would cook. They, the year before that, they cooked up against the wall. Huh. So um, it just seemed it seemed to work. I was I was surprised. Is that some kind of a plum? That's just an ornamental plum. It's a Prunus crowder Vesuvius. It's it's one that you see in people's front yards. But it's ornamental, not orna very ornamental very only. Oh. Ornamental what only. What I mean is, would it not approach part of the wall? Would it, would it not what? Like the the wall itself, would it have no problem with that? No, no. I mean. Destroy the wall? No, no, because I'm letting it grow outward. Um, behind, behind. So, so I've got three different types of, of persimmons growing here. Uh, coffee cake, the one that's covered with fruit right there. I actually thinned the fruit off of it so that I could get bigger fruit. Um, the chocolate right there, and the chocolate is actually a pollinator. It has mo mainly main, male flowers to start with. It's the pollinizer for the coffee cake. I didn't know that, and and but but the but the salesman knew what he was. He was helped me out. That the guy knew. And so you can see the coffee cake's covered with fruit. It's also, a, from what I understand, it's a, it's a delicious uh, persimmon. Um, and then the chocolate only gets a few fruit on it. Its main job is to fertilize the, 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 um, the uh, coffee cake. And then, of course, we have the um, fuyus on both sides. Um, and then we have numerous uh, medicinal herbs inside. We have like uh, lemongrass, borage. Um, you know, we have certain, certain types of thyme, uh, lemon verbena. Um, that this is our. This is what my yeah, wife had a really nice But I'm born and raised here. Behind, uh, behind all the trees here, I'm growing passion fruit. So you can see the passion fruit vines are taking off. I'm actually going to trellis those across all the way across the garage because. In the winter time, those persimmons will drop their leaves, and I want something on there. And and the, the, this variety, um, I've also I have some other the other ones that Charles gave me some other uh, passion fruit, but these are extremely vigorous and will. They, I just put them in recently. They will cover this garage in no time at all, and they have beautiful flowers. You can see there's some flowers on there already. So that's um, this is this this has been coming along very nicely. This. Did you say you had some garlic also? Something? There's some garlic in here. Yeah. Where? On a lot of the trees. I, I've I've been doing it for over over a year now. Great. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background, a little bit of history, and where we are today, and where we're going in the future. Um, the products, when you look for Ivory Organics, whether it's on the internet or... Um, it lowers cholesterol. So if you've enjoyed this educational opportunity brought to you by Ivory Organics in conjunction with the California Rare, Rare Fruit Growers of California, specifically the West Los Angeles chapter. If you've liked this, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all the other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching. And happy gardening.